USS Caribbean used to escape Dennis Chabrol. First, the headlines. President Donald Ramatar has invited opposition leader David Granger for talks on Guyana's political impasse. The International Monetary Fund, or IMF, continues to voice concern about the future impact of Petro Caribe on the Caribbean if that oil deal falls through. And a Cuban doctor contracts Ebola while working in Sierra Leone. Details of these and other stories coming up. President Donald Ramatar has invited opposition leader David Granger to talks despite the combined opposition's position not to speak with government about matters on the parliamentary agenda ever since the Guyanese leader suspended parliament one week ago. Mr. Ramatar prorogued the parliament on November 10, the same day that the opposition had planned to debate and pass a no-confidence motion and make way for elections in 90 days. The prorogation or suspension of parliament gives government an extended lease on life for up to six months, while the Alliance for Change, or AFC, and Granger's Partnership for National Unity, or APNU, have vowed not to speak with government unless the parliamentary suspension is lifted, the president has formally invited the opposition leader for talks. Mr. Granger tells me that although his stance is unlikely to change, he will reply to the president after meetings of the executives of APNU and the People's National Congress Reform the major party in the partnership. The partnership is based on institutions, and I need to consult. Although we have made that um, statement before, the partnership is aware of the position we've taken on consultation since the 10th of November when the parliament was prorogued. So I'm sure they'll be um, bearing in mind the prorogation as we proceed towards any possible negotiation. But do you envisage a recanting of the position? There is no evidence to suggest um, um, that the partnership will, will change its view that it has followed over the last, um, you know, uh, you know, well, since Monday the tenth. The AFC had tabled the no confidence motion citing government's spending of monies without parliamentary approval and the refusal to assent laws and respect motions that have been approved by the opposition controlled National Assembly. For its part, the opposition has refused to pass amendments to the Anti Money Laundering and Countering of Financing Terrorism Act, in keeping with recommendations by the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force and the Global Watchdog Financial Action Task Force. Dominica's Electoral Commission has announced that the number of eligible voters for next month's elections is more than that island's population. Figures show that there are 72,489 eligible voters for the general election set for December 8. However, based on the last census, the total population of that island is 72,301. Former Dominican ambassador to the UN, Crispin Gregoire, believes the Electoral Commission is to be blamed for the state of the electoral list in Dominica over the past five years. He says a previous electoral observer mission by the Organization of American States, or OOS, had highlighted a number of deficiencies that have not been addressed. I, I simply want to remind the Commission that the report of the OAS said that Dominica had to address some problems of the electoral machinery and here we are five years later it has not been addressed and i'm being told just before this meeting that our list our electoral list is like over 72,000 or 70,000 how could you you so your electoral list is more than your population so that's one problem his comments were made as he addressed a live radio panel discussion on good governance in dominica the chief elections officer stephen Laroque as Harvard said, that Dominica's electoral laws provide for a continuous registration and a claims and objections period, 
rather than a fresh re-registration of all eligible voters. Antigua and Barbuda has banned the poultry and the poultry products from the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, and the Japan in the wake of an outbreak of bird flu. Scientists say that this strain of avian influenza may be transmitted to humans. The ban will remain in force until further notice. The decision by the Antigua and Barbuda authorities follows outbreaks of the disease at poultry farms in the UK and the Netherlands. Thousands of chickens and ducks have been already culled to prevent the disease from spreading. In Holland, authorities blocked the transportation of eggs and the poultry on Sunday after a strain of the flu was detected in a market south of Amsterdam. A Cuban doctor, part of the country's medical team that is fighting the Ebola disease in Sierra Leone, has been infected by the virus and will be flown to Geneva, Switzerland, to be treated. Cuban officials say Dr. Felix Baez Saria, an internal medicine specialist as part of the Henry Reeve International Contingent of Doctors that has been working in Sierra Leone since early October. According to the Cuban Health Ministry, on November 16, Baez, who had attended Ebola patients, came down with a high fever without showing any other symptoms of the disease. He was then moved to the treatment center in Kerry Town, set up for UN officials, where Cuban professionals also work. A diagnostic test was conducted on Monday, which was positive for Ebola. The health ministry says Abayas is being cared for by British doctors experienced in treating Ebola patients and who are in constant contact with Cuban medical specialists. He is to be transferred to the University Hospital of Geneva as recommended by the World Health Organization, which is a center specializing in the treatment and the management of highly infectious diseases. Authorities say that a patient is currently without complications and is hemodynamically stable. Cuba has sent three brigades of health specialists, including doctors and nurses, to West African countries hit by the Ebola epidemic. The International Monetary Fund, or IMF, says it is very concerned about the future of the Petro-Caribe concessionary oil deal in the wake of Venezuela's deteriorating economy and falling international oil prices. Several Caribbean countries have signed energy accords with that Latin American country. Voicing the concern late Tuesday afternoon was advisor in the IMF's Western Hemisphere Department, Eli Canetti, at a media briefing at Cabinet Room in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Canetti, who was heading an IMF team to the country on an Article 4 consultation, said Venezuela is hugely dependent on its oil sales, with the price of oil dropping from around $115 US dollars per barrel to $70 US dollars per barrel, he says this deepens concerns. So, so I think we are mindful and concerned about the, the uh, feasibility of Petro Caribe continuing, uh, certainly at the level it has been. Uh, and so we are looking into what will be the impact on Caribbean countries. And we've, we've been thinking about this for a while, but I would say the urgency of trying to understand that is much higher now, both because the situation, financial situation in Venezuela does appear to be deteriorating, and we expect that it, it may deteriorate much more quickly now with the drop in oil prices. Addressing the potential impact on Caribbean states in the event of a petro caribe collapse, Canetti referred specifically to the eastern Caribbean country of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. He said the state-owned electricity supply monopolist St. Vincent Electricity Services Limited, Vinlec, has alternatives, and he was assured that finding an alternative supply of fuel was at best a minimal concern. But the major concern, the IMF official says, will be the fiscal impact because of the loss of water seen as a generous energy agreement between St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Venezuela. The impact, if anything, would be a fiscal impact because Petro Caribe comes with advantageous financing terms. Uh, and so if Petro Caribe is uh, in the extreme wound down completely or, or at least if the uh, financing benefits become less generous. It is something that will have to be taken account into the fiscal strategy. And uh, I think the, the uh, I guess the positive aspect of that is the, the uh, terms for which Petro Caribe financing comes. It's basically concessional long-term financing. The IMF wants to know the type of projects that Petro Caribe's funds are being spent on. 
Canetti says there will have to be some thinking about how to replace the financing of projects from those concessions if those concessions were to be lost. Meanwhile, St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez says that the arrangement with Petro Caribbean Agreement is triggered if the price of oil rises above 50 U.S. dollars per barrel. He says that at 75 U.S. dollars per barrel, it is clear that the extent of the country's indebtedness is far less than when it was at 115 U.S. dollars per barrel, and therefore Venezuela has less of a burden because of the smaller sum. The Prime Minister acknowledges that a deteriorating economic situation in Venezuela is part of the consideration. Four foreigners, a Canadian, an Indian, and two Italians, have been sentenced to prison in Cuba for the sexual abuse of children, while another two are awaiting trial for similar offenses. An official report says that a Canadian has been sentenced to 13 years behind bars in Cuba for the sexual abuse of minors. An Indian was sentenced to 30 years for that crime plus drug trafficking. The two Italians face 23 and 25 years in prison, respectively, for murder and the corruption of minors. Details of the sentences were revealed in an official Cuban report about the fight against prostitution and other forms of sexual abuse in 2013, published Tuesday on the website of the Foreign Ministry. In the case of the foreigners, the document states that they were proved to have sexual relations with minors in Cuba. It adds that another two individuals, a Briton and a Spaniard, are awaiting trial and charges of having sexual relations with minors. In 2013, Cuba tried a total of 144 cases associated with crimes of child prostitution, sexual abuse, and procuring, of which 13 showed conduct characteristic of people trafficking, for which they were sentenced to between 3 and 14 years in jail. Jamaica's state-owned Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica, or PCJ, is looking into producing biofuel from local crops as an alternative to imported oil. The government in Kingston says that a PCJ has signed an agreement with Bordel's Agricultural Research Station and the Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute, or CARDI, for the experimental cultivation of select crops for biofuel production, according to an official statement. PCJ's manager of renewable energy and energy efficiency, Peter Redock, says an oil press is being purchased to get the oil out from the seeds for tests to be conducted. The results of the study are expected to be published in one or two years. Research is being carried out on locally grown jatropha and castor. After selecting crops, the next stages will include harvesting, extracting the oils, engine tests, and establishing a retail market with Petrojam Limited, which supplies the country with a full range of petroleum products. We are 15 states with a common goal, a unified purpose to face the world. Enriching lives, empowering people, creating a strong economic region. No matter where you're from, no hassle, just freedom. Whether this is school or pleasure, we will benefit together. We can come single market, good for you and me. We carry come single market, good for you and me. We carry come single market, good for you and me. Oh yeah! And that's it for this edition of Caribbean News Desk. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget you can visit us on our website at carbnewsdesk.com or on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash carb news desk you can also find us on twitter at twitter.com forward slash dem waves if you would like to advertise with us drop us a line at carb news desk at gmail.com thanks for joining us i'm dennis chabrol have a good night yeah.